for those of you that are watching and for those of you who may be later, uh, you know, this, this broadcast will, will be stored in our Facebook, in our YouTube channel. You are welcome to join us there and to watch it anytime you want. Uh, once we finish, we try to add subtitles and make it more accessible, but to do it live is, is very complicated. So uh, eight films, seven guests today. It's five live interviews, two pre-recorded. We're going to start with the live ones. And then we will be joined also by our beloved uh, in-house translator, Fiona. And we will do three more. And then we have two special ones pre-recorded. So a long vermouth, as, as the tradition dictates, uh, a long vermouth, so stay with us and share with us um, your thoughts on the films. Let's, let's welcome Pepe. Uh, hola. Hola. Hola, Pepe. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Bienvenido. Uh, it connected me to some films. Uh, I think the references are kind of clear. I'm thinking on uh, Eric Romer or particularly Hong Sang So uh, mm -hmm. and his last film, The Woman Who Ran, which is full of encounters, conversations, cafes, conversations mm -hmm. again, uh, mm -hmm. or taking it closer maybe to some of the films of Jonas Trueba. But mm -hmm. um, in those films, or in your film in this case, I, uh, we find that what you were saying, there are couples that can spend the whole life without talking about these things. But mm -hmm. it's very enriching, this, mm -hmm. this process of discovering new layers and, and, experiences, and experiencing, experiencing this discovery when talking mm -hmm. to someone else, when discovering you know, new ways of feeling, new ways of facing love, new ways of, mm -hmm. of, of thinking on a relationship or politics or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But this, this moment of conversation as a process of discovery uh, is very present mm -hmm. in your film. I don't know if you could tell us more. It's funny that you say Hong Sang-so because I think that uh, a week ago I, I was watching an interview with him and he told the thing that that it's really it's really cool, and I think that I that I really embrace that idea, and I think that there's a lot of uh, that thing that Constanzo said in Las Llamas del Sol. He said that uh, he can taste an ice cream, and you can taste that same ice cream too. And I can try to describe uh, what that ice cream tastes to me, but you're not gonna you're no uh, you're never gonna know what that tastes to me because the taste is different to you and me. So everything is different for each one. Um, and that's why, that's what he tries to do with his movies. He tries to, um, to show uh, that everyone is different and we are not gonna really never understand anyone. But because we don't want to be uh, in solitude, we ignore that and we, and we do as we understand each other but it's something that we create uh, that we create it's something that really does not exist and i think that that's in las llamas del sol too maybe not in the same way as Juan Sanso because i'm another person but um but yeah i think that's something that it's right there and and it's something that it's uh, in every relationship and 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 yeah, I don't know if I if I answer your question or is it kind of connected. No, no, but... yes, uh, and it's uh, it's 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 taking us, you know, to 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 this topic and and worries on that is is there in our societies and and the way we relate and the way we interact. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I I keep finding that you know in 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 every relationship I have or, or mm -hmm. people in relationships. Uh, as I was saying, if you don't talk about these things, maybe you gain some things mm -hmm. uh, by <laughs> yeah. by opening up by mm -hmm. uh, entering this process of discovery, almost of negotiation. Mm -hmm. uh, there seems mm -hmm. to be a, a negotiation as well between mm -hmm. them two in, in your film. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you kind of expand yourself emotionally and, 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 and uh, humanly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, the, the film, uh, as I said, it looks fantastic. It's, it's, it, uh, you've taken a lot of care on the light, the photography, give mm -hmm. it a, a naturalist film uh, mm -hmm. feeling. Can you mm -hmm. tell us about your, your, the, the thinking before the, the film and what, what you wanted to, to get with? 
Yeah, so um, there were two cinematographers. Uh, one of them was a very good friend of mine and the other one was my girlfriend. Uh, uh, at that time, we were studying at ECAM, uh, which is the film school of Madrid. And uh, from the beginning, uh, we knew that we wanted to, to film in 16 millimeters. Uh, I don't know if, if that's something because we are young and we want to try the things that uh, were used uh, um, in other times, but uh, we are, uh, the three of us, uh, we are very uh, analog enthusiasts. We do a lot of analog photography and we knew that we wanted to try that, um, not only because of the image, but also because of the process. Uh, we knew that if, uh, we knew that uh, a shooting uh, with 16 millimeters would be totally different because there would be a, a more respect, more, um, I don't know how to say it. There was something kind of magic in the atmosphere because everyone knew that the, uh, the image we were shooting uh, was uh, was being uh, I don't know how to say was being uh, impressed in a in a physical format. There were the not emotion. ones and zeros. Yeah, the light of the two girls, the light of the actresses, is now in a physical format. So it's kind of it's kind of 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 beautiful to beautiful to think that way. Um, the, uh, about the image, um, normally I I like. Uh, I like doing photographs. I, I like uh, watching paintings and I have like a like a very composite of uh, fetish. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just worked like that. Um, uh, one thing I knew is that I, I didn't want it to, to repeat uh, um, shots. Uh, so there's not uh, shots repeated in Las Llamas del Sol. and. I think that it's something that I would like to to do for the rest of my life if I can <laughs> continue uh, directing films. Yeah. Well, one of the things of filming with analog is that you have to be you have to think more on when you are shooting because the, mm -hmm. the time you have in a reel of film mm -hmm. and the cost of developing <laughs> mm -hmm. is not like yeah. you can leave the camera on if you want, mm -hmm. but not quite like that. But you mm -hmm. have to. Be careful of what you you shoot to don't run out of film. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and uh, at the shooting there was something uh, um, with the film with the first uh, film we we used that uh, it started to do uh, some strange noises and uh, we all uh, panicked because uh, we didn't uh, we were losing uh, minutes. And uh, we had to to take off the film, and we can't. Uh, we could use. We could not use that. Um, but uh, I don't know how. But we were all very calm, and the shooting went okay. And in the end, uh, uh, we didn't use uh, all the film we had. Uh, something very strange, but but. Maybe this kind of, of thing that you, this kind of, of way of thinking that you say, uh, helped us to 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 be like uh, um, conservadores, conservative, <laughs> strict, yeah, strict or meticulous, yeah, no? sí, sí. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we welcome Elias El Faris. Yes, please. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? Thank you. In your film, one, one of the messages that comes across is that uh, young love, true love, will come, will endure anything, no? Uh, and the question is, wh where, where does it start, this, this project? How you come up with the idea of the characters and the, the turn the, the story, the, the beautiful day on the beach into a film? Um, first, I, my English is not very, very good. So, so sometimes I, I have to to search from words and etc. And mm -hmm. um, uh, Sukar, is, it's it's quite strange because um, uh, it's 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 many uh, many uh, reasons that uh, that um, pushed me to to to, to make it. But uh, uh, of course, there is a political context uh, in Morocco. Uh, 
where you, love is still forbidden in a way, um, love between um, young people uh, uh, unmarried. So uh, it's it's um, it's um, there is this tension ev ev everywhere in in many places, and the beach is is a place where uh, couples um, come and um, they find uh, uh, some some air, some <coughs> some place, but uh, but there is this police uh, on on uh, on horses. So it's immediately uh, a, a situation. Uh, it's a strange situation. It's it's funny, but it's pathetic. It's tragic uh, in the same time. So there was this um, this political context, uh, and uh, I I I I never um, I never. Uh, I, I didn't know that I, I, I could make a movie about it, but uh, I had some motif. I don't know the, the English word for motif, but some, let's say... Things, uh, ideas, yes. Yes, little ideas like aesthetic, you know, like uh, the bull. Uh, yes, the, the ladder, the, the, mm -hmm. the body, the lifeguard, like... Those the the donuts man fighting with the with the the, the, the lifeguard that that's something that I saw actually <laughs> in Morocco like twelve years ago. So those those things were on 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 paper somewhere and uh, and it really one day every every everything uh, came and uh, and it was clear that uh, that. For me, it was the best way to to express this this, this feeling of injustice and uh, and the, the 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 love celebration and it's Elias. It's brilliant. I'm sure you've been told this already, but it's brilliant how you encapsulate in nine minutes the particularities. You know, saying you know, explaining what you are explaining. It feels like the the film has more neorealist or documentary or reality uh, than we see it from here from the united kingdom that might seem more like a like a love fantasy uh, but it has that it has the the reality but it has also elements of classic universal love i'm thinking on disney movies i'm thinking on romeo and juliet fighting the authority you no know? it's that kind of you know very universal motifs uh, as you were saying I don't know how you work with those, with that balance between particular elements of, of, of your experience and these universal things that are in your film that makes it so powerful. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You know, uh, Suka was, um, was really uh, uh, like a game, um, a cinema game for me. Uh, and um, it's my third movie and... Um, I, I I think I I'm crazy about this one thing that I, I love in cinema is the uh, the silent the silent movies like uh, how 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 express something without words and for me that's the, the it's not my only my point of view but it's the power of cinema so my 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 film just before was uh, quite classic in this in his form. Uh, with the many words and uh, and I I and my first movie was a silent movie also so I wanted to 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 return to to, to this cinema that, that I love that is not very easy to to sometimes to finance to fin financer mm -hmm. but but uh, really it, it was a very lucky experience uh, uh, I wanted to 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 experiment uh, the Again, the liberty of the, the freedom of cinema and uh, and uh, and to to only to 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 connect with the with strong people with the uh, characters that I that I really want to 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 play with and to to watch and to to I don't know it's, it's it, it was be. it was this energy you know like this this weak energy you know, four days or three three four days and. Uh, 
for me, cinema is you, you capture something and uh, and that's all. But you, you do capture uh, some extraordinary characters. I mean, you mentioned the one who sells the donuts uh, and the, the raffle, no, with the guy uh, who runs the, the chiringuito, the bar, no, there in, in on the beach. But e even the the police uh, on, on horseback. Everybody comes out well. They, they are nice people. They, I, I, you, you like the young lovers. You like the kids. You like everybody in the film. How how you go about that? Is, do you do you know anyone you don't like? <laughs> you what? Sorry. No, it's, it's, it's just commenting on what you just said. That, uh, Alberto was mentioning that as well. It was nine minutes the film, but in those nine minutes we get to like mm. a lot of people that comes in your film. Mm. Yes. I think that's. The, 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 really, they summarize the concept of love, no? not love from be, only between the couple, but everybody is mm. like about that. Yes, yes, because very charismatic, they, they, everyone. Yes, they, it, it it had to be in in, in immediate, like uh, like you know, like you you see them and it's you have the impression that you know them. I don't know, they they are like uh, they are not people. They are like uh, allegory and. the uh, uh, for me, uh, there are many versions of of love, and uh, I don't know. It's uh, it was very important for me not to present things like uh, uh, the bad ones and the the the, the, the good ones and uh, and uh, victims. And uh, I I wanted I wanted it really naive, and uh, and I think it's the best way to to fight. Um, and mentality it's uh, it's not to to present things like uh, uh, with evidence and uh, yeah if if i want to 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 celebrate love i have to make a love movie with the uh, what is love and this this sensation um, it's not only like showing uh, poor people sad people victims of 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 a society i have to to really show how because I, I, I think, I'm sure that I, they are stronger uh, than uh, everything. And uh, it was just to, 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 to show it. Let's welcome Maria Jaime. Uh, Hi. Our... Hola, Maria. Yeah. Hola. Maria, without uh, further ado, I'd like to ask you um, mm -hmm. if this film uh, was always meant to be a meta -doc documentary with this kind of behind the scenes a mixture with the real film, uh, or it was an accident as, as, as it went through. Tell us a bit about this, about the yeah, process. Uh, I, I started to think about the film like a theater, uh, like a play for theater, because I, I, I when I talked to my grandfather and he told me this story about their, their meeting, um, I think about uh, Romeo and Juliet like in a theater, but uh, in Granada in uh, in the 50s. But it was too short and it, it wasn't um, enough to me. So I and I, I, I wanted to, to show my grandparents because <laughs> you have seen them. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I started to think about the fiction, the, the fiction, Seen, and then we we started to to interview them, and then I thought, okay, I have to I have to make this like this. I can I can't uh, do it another way. So it happened like that. And and the film or, or the film about the film becomes bigger, no, than than yeah. the in 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 many ways. Hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, totally. I discovered my grandparents, they discovered me. Uh, we together discovered making a movie uh, like like that. So, 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 so funny. The, the, I mean, the, the story about a couple uh, managing to be together for 70 years yeah. is strong enough. Uh, but <laughs> you bring your relationship with him, with them, sorry, uh, and also your. Well, the, the rest of the family is, is like a chance to get all together to do a project. It, how how you come up with that? How can, how can you decide to do that? Or how how they affect? 
I don't know <laughs> because I'm a little bit crazy maybe uh, uh, at at the beginning of the the, the um, pre preparing the the short film I was like so so afraid and I was like oh I, why I'm doing this but uh, every every one in the family was like okay we're we're in we're in and like we we support you and I was like oh my god <laughs> I have to do this and so yeah and I, I, I thought it would be the op the opposite that you had the plan and you and you had to convince them and it was hard. <laughs> No, I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I was like, excuse me, would you like to participate to shoot, to shoot with me? And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. What do I have to do? I cook. I, I, I buy beers. I, I bring the, the costumes. So... It's it's beautiful what Rafa saying, no, and what you were saying. How the film becomes an excuse for this big family family gathering. I don't know if these gatherings happen often in your family or it was a special occasion, but it feels like the energy of all these people coming together. Yeah, uh, they they have done like uh, meetings with a lot of um, people in my family, but I I didn't went to to any any of them, so it was my first time. My first time all also shooting and my first time like uh, like a director. So mm. and I guess one, one important decision in the film is the moment that you put yourself in the film, no? The moment that <laughs> that that you know you, you you choose what you were saying is a very brave and and complex often decision of okay, I'm gonna show my fears, my struggle. Uh, the problems I'm facing trying to shoot this film in the film itself. Yeah, it was like um, I, uh, when I uh, when I, I interviewed my grandparents, they were different if I was uh, with them or uh, on the other side of the council. So it became uh, no, it's empezó um, empezó como. Empezó de manera casual y, y claro, como fueron sucediendo todos los acontecimientos, eh, me pareció, y al equipo, porque mi equipo, o sea, éramos, éramos un equipo muy pequeño y al equipo nos pareció interesante que eso formase parte también del proceso, como era la primera vez, que fuese una primera vez de todo y que se viese ahí. Let's get Andrés in. Hello. Andrés Restrepo Gómez, de Directo. Hello. Razón es la Hello. How, are How are you? How are you? Do you listen to me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Perfect. Where, where are you okay. at the moment? I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina, with a coffee. <laughs> Very... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Demasiado temprano por haber won. It's uh, nine, ten, son las diez. Las diez, las diez y cuarto, yes. sí. That's right. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in, in an hour we can enter with a, a wine. <laughs> but when we interviewed Flores from uh, I think it was Chile, and it was six, six, six a.m. and we were here having a, a drink and that. <laughs> 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 bueno, it was, it's, a, it's um, a big pleasure. I, I'm going to talk like in Spanish, maybe for some little things no, I, I can develop in, in English, but. To develop better in some questions, I will talk in Spanish. <laughs> Feel free to express your ideas in the in the native language. That's why Fiona is here for. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I do feel comfortable in Spanish. Just talk Spanish, and, and and then Fiona can interpret the, what you say. But anyway, the 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 the, the, the subject, I mean, the, the theme of this program is love, another love. It's not another love. Love is what it is, but it's another way to look at it. And 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 I was wondering what, what you show in your film is is the dream, is the memory of a of a love. And I, I wonder if that is the strongest, densest way of thinking on love. The, the, to think the memory of something that is gone, of a love that is gone. Sí, creo coincido en que como que el el tema del amor surge en el corto precisamente desde el recordar del amor y sobre todo un temor muy grande hacia, hacia el olvido. Creo que en definitiva eso fue lo que me movió 
eh, más allá del amor, el recuerdo del amor y el temor a, a la pérdida del recuerdo de, del amor, de los pequeños detalles, de, de, del estrudo, de, de, de los pequeños detalles que conforman una, una relación en, en esta ciudad. Eh, eh, fue, fue como ese, la inquietud inicial fue desde el olvido, digamos. And we were playing, Andrés, you were saying, that's, that's too much in, in your Facebook the other day. But we were feeling like there's something of, of the essence of, of breathless, you know, of, you know, this, this game with time, but also this crazy, stupid, uh, big romantic love. And remembering there is elements of analog, of love for classic film. And, you know, there's those elements of the film reel. So we see that, we see that, and we see the construction of, of archival footage like a more modern Godard. Uh, I, I know Godard is a big word, obviously. We're not trying to draw a, a direct comparison, but we're saying that we see some things that remind us of some particular films of Godard. Yes, yes, I don't deny my, like, my direct influence. Obviously, like, Noel Bach is like big words, but yes, there's something of, of the world, of the play, of the, the meta, meta, meta cinema, the, the film that is constructing he, itself in the moment. I, I was like curious of that stuff. Uh, more of Romer, I, I'm, I'm more lover of, of Eric Romer, maybe Truffaut, but Romer was like the direct um, reference to, to this film. And also some of Chris Marker's work, um, Santolé, La Yete, of course, uh, at, the, at, at, at last, uh, there are some photograms I stole Chris, to Chris Marker, but the beginning is kind of a rewriting of the beginning of, of Saint Soleil, that, that uh, the, the narrator is saying that he will someday uh, start a film using one type of photogram and there it will be black. Well, the, the beginning of the Heart of Four World is It's like similar. I want like to 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 play with that uh, meta cinema thing of the film working and and like co cosiéndose a sí misma, haciéndose a sí misma. Mm -hmm. So we're not lying. We were right. Yeah, yeah there we is. were right, in <laughs> bad, but it's too much like put it. <laughs> <laughs> no, joking. It's not about right or wrong, but we could see a respect and a dialogue with the masters of the Nouvelle back there. Uh, so, so happy you can confirm that. Hi, Hi. Diego. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Hola, Diego. <laughs> Hola. Welcome. How are you? Where are you? Fine. I am the production company office because I have to work today, but I'm here. So, <laughs> yes. it's a sunny day in Madrid, so it's perfect. And I have yes. my Mao, the best beer in the world. <laughs> yes. We've been having Cruz Campo, Mao. Tenet, the Rafa is on the Tenet, and I'm on Estrella Dam. Perfect. I will try to speak in English, but maybe I block, so Fiona can help me. Okay. Diego, si te sientes mejor hablando en español, habla en español y Fiona te puede traducir. Bueno, vale, como quieras. A mí me da igual. Como quieras. Bueno, eh, there was a, um, it's a very hot film. Uh, in, in, in a way, it felt like a hot film. Sometimes we, we managed to get films. We're very, we're not very fussy about getting premieres or films that you know are in the peak of the festival circuit. Sometimes it's been two years since they finished the festival circuit and, and we get it. But it's not the case of your film, which is kind of hot out of the oven, and we were so so happy to to have it. Uh, I think you know it's it's one of those COVID films you know made and and that has been put into the festival circuit uh, with this already uh, taking place. I think it's been in Malaga and in several festivals. I don't know if you could start by telling us you know, how it feels to release a film in this context. Eh, bueno, pues eh, lo hicimos cuando el mundo todavía era feliz y había esperanza. <laughs> y justo empezamos a moverlo a principios de año y de repente arrancó súper bien. Todos los festivales que teníamos un poco planificados empezaron a salir. Estábamos muy contentos y de repente, pues justo, justo cuando, me acuerdo además, de hecho, la semana antes de, de cuando nos encerraron, eh, estábamos en la fiesta del Festival de Málaga y dos días después en la fiesta de presentación del Festival de Medina del Campo, pasándolo súper bien, emborrachándonos, hablando de, de la vida y del amor y de la muerte. Y, 
Y justo recuerdo de estar yendo a Medina del campo, volviendo en coche, que salió la noticia del móvil de, oye, que este fin nos encierran. Y claro, fue como, hostia, ¿qué va a pasar con esto? ¿no? Y bueno, pues fue un poco triste porque al final los cortometrajistas hacemos cortos también para, pues para ir a los festivales, para conocernos, para hacer grupo, para pasarlo bien, para vivir experiencias, conectar, hablar. Y ha sido un poco mierda esa parte. Pero bueno, sí que también el online tiene una ventaja que es que se va a ver más el corto. Y el corto es verdad que se ha visto más, ha tenido mucho más impacto. Pero, bueno, pues esa parte de experiencia personal sí que se ha perdido un poco, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, la historia es no frustrarse y no parar. O sea, ahora pues tengo otro corto que ya rodé y que voy a estrenar ahora después del COVID. Eh, tengo otro que voy a rodar ahora en dos meses. Entonces, bueno, como que ya también un poco la vista en, oye, que bueno, esto ha sido así y punto, vamos a seguir adelante, ¿sabes? Well, I, I can see behind you one of the posters that is in the beast room in, your, in, in the film. And that goes perfect with my first question. What happened to David? There seems to be a paradox there, no? The, the guy is looking to, for his best half, but the minute he starts in that journey, he gets somebody, jumps to the next one, starts looking for the next one. Sí. Um, bueno, esta peli de Romas, de Albert Brooks, a mí me encanta porque al final lo que te cuenta es un personaje que, bueno, la película empieza y él lo deja con su novia pero lo que quiere es que la deje ella a él y no lo consigue. Entonces, cuando le deja, se arrepiente muy bien, está toda la película intentando recuperarla. Entonces, se entiende que es una cosa cíclica en la que él todo el rato, para demostrarse algo a sí mismo, no la necesito, puedo estar solo, tal, no sé qué, la deja todo y al final vuelve, 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 vuelve. Y era un poco como una clase de sentimiento que yo quería reflejar en, en este corto, ¿no? O sea, al final el protagonista es un tipo que que se siente que le falta algo y no sabe el qué. Entonces, él idealiza todo lo que no tiene. Pues va en el metro y ve a una pareja y ya dice, joder, yo quiero estar ahí. Eh, y así constantemente. Él está todo el rato fuera de la realidad, fuera del presente. Siempre en el futuro o en el pasado, viendo de la nostalgia de las cosas que ha vivido o en el futuro de las cosas que él imagina que, que podría tener. ¿no? Pues él cree que va a ser feliz teniendo una pareja yendo al cine y dándose besitos, eh, paseando por el retiro o cualquier cosa así. ¿no? Y luego cuando lo tiene se da cuenta de que en verdad no era, o sea, no es, no es, no es el hecho de tener algo, sino de, de sentirte tú ahí, ¿no? Y él cuando lo consigue se da cuenta de que su cabeza sigue idealizando otra vez lo que él no tiene, entrando como una especie de ciclo, de, ciclo, de un bucle, en el que realmente nunca va a conseguir lo que quiere, ¿sabes? Porque no existe, porque no puedes conseguir, o sea, no, la realidad que tú te montas no, no es un ideal que, que no existe. Amor imposible. Eso es. Bien. Um... You talk about a, a more passive uh, character or side of the of, of the protagonist, um, and we also see a an act well a, a more active and sorry you were describing a more active role on taking decisions on going to the next thing, and and we also see a, a passive role in the in the way that uh, this actor Santi Alberu we were talking earlier about Shaki Ben Omar which is a very powerful face in the films of Oliver Lache but in very few films and Santi Alberu. Um, it's a face, it's an actor that you kind of anticipates that bad things are going to happen to him. I don't know, it's hard to detach from the Bosco of selfie, but um, it's, it, it becomes like a, almost like a Spanish version of a modern Buster Keaton in the sense of bad things are going to happen to this guy, but I can't stop watching at his face in the screen as these things happen. Uh, how was, you know, uh, I don't know if this was Uh, you know, if you were writing this character for Santi or he came later on board or how was working on, on that? Bueno, eh, realmente cuando lo escribí yo, porque esto se escribió como dos, tres años antes de que yo lo rodase, yo tenía escrito como para otro actor, pero cuando, cuando me puse a escribirlo, eh, yo estaba escribiendo sobre una persona que era 30 años más para arriba, ¿sabes? Y cuando me di cuenta dije, a ver, no, 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 yo tengo que hablar de lo que yo siento de mi generación, ¿no? Entonces... Eh, me di cuenta que tenía que bajar como la edad. Y entonces fue un poco también como en común de, de la elegir la... En, en verdad la elegí antes a ella que a él. Elegí antes a Catalina porque bueno, la vi, la descubrí y, que, y solo podía ser ella. Todo lo que representa a ella es inocencia, bueno, esa falsa inocencia, esa dulzura. Eh, y entonces cuando la vi a ella, eh, me imagina a Santi. No sé por qué me la imaginé. Y porque buscaba un actor, porque... El, al final la concepción del corto eh, no es tanto de comedia a nivel formal ni a nivel de texto, entonces yo sí que buscaba, hay mucho silencio, hay mucha pausa, 
mucha observación. Entonces yo sí que quería un actor que fuese, que, que fuese cómico 100%, o sea, un cómico, literalmente, para que esa parte me naliese. Y nada, y mmm, hablé con Santi y le pareció estupendo todo y fuimos para allá. Y fue muy divertido porque en rodaje yo normalmente voy con las cosas muy claras, ¿no? este es el plano, tú tienes, tienes que sentir esto, tienes que transmitir esto. Y él, como es un culo inquieto y, y es muy buen cómico y siempre quiere hacer reír y es muy brillante en ese sentido, pues el rato proponía cosas que, que, que en rodaje no, no te escojonábamos todos. O sea, es que de repente acababa una secuencia, una cosa completamente distinta de la que tenía que hacer y claro, te descojonabas. Y eso fue muy guay. Y, porque de repente llevó también el corto, o sea, lo que yo quería lo conseguí, ¿sabes? Y una cosa luego que pasó en montaje, teniendo en cuenta esto de Santi y su vena cómica, fue que cuando empezamos a montar, o sea, la concepción inicial del guión era de que el protagonista fuese un tipo con el que tú te pudieses identificar, que te diese una especie de pena, ¿no? Es un personaje un poco patético, entonces tenías que tenerle como pena, ¿no? En plan de que te importe las cosas que le pasan. Aunque es un poco capullo, es verdad, el tipo es un poco capullo, ¿no? Pero tampoco podía hacerlo demasiado. Entonces, ¿qué pasó? Que cuando hicimos la primera versión de montaje, yo soy montador de origen, pues el montaje es una cosa que me tomo bastante en serio y siempre lo, lo delego a otra persona para un poco a ver qué, verlo un poco desde fuera, ¿no? Y la primera versión que vimos de montaje era un personaje que odiabas, o sea, desde el principio le odiabas, querías matarle, decías, pero ¿cómo puede ser tan capullo, tan hijo de puta? Y entonces eso fue porque se montó todo lo, digamos, lo de que Santi aportó a ese nivel de llevar una comedia un poco más estúpida, un poco más, que era muy divertida, o sea, esa versión era muy divertida, sí, pero tenía un problema, que era que no empatizabas con el personaje. Entonces, claro, había que decidirse entre, ¿qué hacemos? ¿Una comedia disparatada en el que odies al personaje o exploramos... O, o volver a lo que yo tenía, que era una cosa más dramática, más patética, tal. Entonces, bueno, al final decidimos hacer como un mix en el que fuese una cosa un poco divertida, pero a la vez también que tuviese esa parte como de, de empatización del personaje. Es Faria Salgado, Inspert, Introduction, de the First Question, y you want me, I, I mean, I can go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Eh, el loca, the main character, destroys a, an invisible wall. Eh, comes from being invisible to be visible and kind of doing whatever he wants. Can you tell us a bit uh, how this come to happen? Bueno, pues esta es una pregunta muy interesante. Voy a intentar de resumirla lo máximo. Eh, en todos mis cortometrajes hablo de las convenciones sociales y de cómo eh, impiden nuestra felicidad y nuestra libertad y también en todas mis historias de alguna manera hablo de mí. Durante muchos años eh, soy madre, tengo dos hijos, eh, me sentí muy invisible, eh, pues eh, sentí que mi vida era cuidar a a los demás y de hecho me acuerdo que me compré tres chándals, uno rojo, uno gris y uno azul, que me ponía pues el lunes el rojo, el miércoles el azul y el viernes el gris y así me tiré un montón de años. Y bueno, Sofía es un personaje que está absorbido por, por, sus, por las obligaciones, sus obligaciones como madre, como trabajadora, que se siente invisible y, y bueno, esto está trasladado en el corto de una manera muy específica y si os dais cuenta, ella observa las clases a escondidas de, de Iván y jamás se atreve a atravesar como una pared imaginaria, ¿no? que es ese encuadre en el que ella jamás entra y lo observa desde fuera y camina alrededor de, de algo que está ocurriendo que le atrae muchísimo pero que ella no se atreve a dar el paso hasta que lo da y de repente traspasa el encuadro, el, traspasa el encuadre y eh, bueno, ahí hay una transformación, diríamos que es una metáfora de, de que ella se atreve en un momento eh, a ser libre y a hacer un poquito lo que quiere, que está eh, reflejado en esa clase de patinaje y en esos patines que para mí son una metáfora pues de, de la libertad, del dejarse llevar, del tirarse eh, eh, en un precipicio. Entonces, bueno, espero haberlo respondido. So, María says that in all of her shorts she talks about the social paradigms that somehow jeopardize our happiness and our freedom. And she also talks about her, herself, her own experience in all of her stories. Uh, she's a mom of two, and when, when she had the children, she also felt 
invisible. She felt that basically her life was, was just taking care of others, and that was it. And Sophia is a character that is um, absorbed by her obligations as a working mother, and she as well feels invisible. So in, in this short, she hides and she observes Ivan's classes, but she never quite uh, crosses that invisible wall. She just you know walks around it and, and hides and, and watches the classes, but that's it. She, she never takes the leap forward until she finally does. And the transformation happens. You know, we could say this is a metaphor. She finally is is free when she takes the skating classes and puts on those skates. The skates are really like a symbol of, of freedom and of taking that leap into the unknown. Uh, the final question for Maria it's about the presence of children, which we've seen in Sukar or in some other films in the in the program too, which gives an essence of you know fluidity, energy, shouting, uh, innocence. Um, uh, purity uh, that maybe helps uh, the way uh, things develop in, in, in Loka. Pues muy interesante la pregunta también. Eh, la infancia eh, para mí es libertad, es eh, hacer lo que uno quiere, es eh, que las, es un momento donde todavía no estamos encorsetados por todas las convenciones, es el juego, eh, además hay un trabajo sonoro eh, en esta dirección eh, muy importante, eh, no sé si os dais cuenta a lo largo de la película que no hay música, pero sí hay música, eh, hay un coro de niños por ahí cantando, hay una clase de piano y bueno, es un sonido, el de los niños, que está todo el tiempo presente. Eh, hay un momento que en, en el cortometraje que luego, haciendo autocrítica, creo que es un momento que habría, lo tendría que haber desarrollado un poquitito más, que es un momento donde una niña coge a, a un niño y le tira y el otro le dice, ¿estás loca? ¿No? Que es un poquito, pues eso, la metáfora de soy niño, hago lo que quiero y me siento libre eh, 100%, ¿no? Eh, sin ningún tipo de corsé. For Maria, childhood means freedom, means doing what one wants. It's a moment in life when we're not stuck in any paradigm. It's basically a time for playing. And the sound in the short has no music. The music that it has is a piano class that we hear, a choir of children warming up and singing, and it's the children's sound that is uh, present throughout the, the entire short film. There's actually a moment that uh, she would have liked to develop more as a, as a director. She thought she should have developed more. It's when one of the girls in the class makes another kid fall when they're skating, and he says, ¿Qué haces loca? Which means like, as in, are you crazy? And she thinks that is a very clear example of, of hey, I'm a kid, I do what I want, I am free, and I have no restraints. Well, that was a, the, a great interview with Maria Salcado Gispert, and as Alberto said, with a privileged translator, Gonzalo Ramos, uh, we were asking Paula because we were so amazed both by the content and the aesthetics of this film. Um, a particular uh, interest on the plastic sound of, of this film, on the textile. Um, it's a film that you can touch. So we were asking about how she uh, worked on that sensorial sense of, of the film. You know, juicy mangoes, sounds, film textures, grainy, uh, grainy uh, celluloid. Uh, the, the final desert textures, you know, the leaves, the, the sound of the river. So, so she answers the following. Hello, I am Paula Rodriguez. I directed Eliconia. Mm, so, um, Eliconia was shot on super eight millimeters. And uh, since the beginning of the project, it was meant to be shot on film. For me, uh, this is really important. Um, film can transport you into a world that is quite opposite 
uh, to what we are used to watch, like uh, when we watch uh, images shot with digital cameras, for example. And um, Neliconia, the plasticity of the image, was a vital dimension, and that is why I chose the Super 8 millimeters instead of other filmic uh, formats. Uh, because Super 8 is rough, uh, unstable, and unpredictable. And uh, what can be seen as a restriction uh, with the 8 millimeters, I use it as a sort of creative power that can lead you uh, into different forms of work, considering the image as a real ground for experimentation. Uh, film is organic, and it is alive, and that's why it is like a second skin that wraps the characters and the landscape in, in the film, in Eliconia. Um, and I like to think that in the end, the characters not only disappear into the desert, but also that they vanish into the filmic grains. And, um, well, uh, concerning the sound, Mm. Our starting point uh, was the same, to have a real uh, sound dough, so we can create like sound stratus, working with different textures to play with a plastic uh, dimension of the sound, um, like superposing different types of natural atmospheres with rough and metallic ambiance or uh, for example, characterize Rouen and Adrian through uh, the sound of each mic. And uh, also with the sound, we try to focus on the elements specific to the landscape, such as uh, the wind or the river, so that we can have the sensation of a great presence of the, of the territory. De acuerdo, pues eh, entonces los word answers of eh, well, what's it called? Paula. Uh, then we answer about the attention, the millimetrical attention to to frame in the film. I mean, she already touches on that question in the first answer, but it really called attention the paradise like way of shooting. Every scene, every landscape. Every different wildness is shot in a way that it makes it so attractive, and that includes the city. Well, that scene of the protagonist having a bath in her garden is just out of paradise. They go to the rivers, they go to the jungle, they go to the desert, and they are all the equal, equal, equally attractive. But we ask her about this: how the the, the beauty? Uh, how can she how she manage with a spray? to get such a beautiful um, framing of the film. There we go. Let's see if I manage. Yeah. Um, I always work uh, with an iconographic archive when I start a project. And this archive is composed with different types of images, uh, such as classic and modern painting but also images from the press and uh, fashion or design pictures. And I always start a project from this archive. And uh, I make a sort of mental collage of different types of images that evoke, um, that evoke me the universe that I want to create in the film. And after that, I create links between the images to make scenes or, or sequences. Mm. And uh, the nar narrative construction really comes later. So my starting point are always these images uh, from this archive. And that is why the framing is quite millimetric. Um, because when I first thought a scene, I thought on a particular, I don't know, Renaissance composition or uh, a color or a lightning from a, a specific image. And um, also pictorial movies are a, a great inspiration for me. 
such as um, Parachanov movies, for example, or Pasolini's La Ricotta. And I think there is something about a static composition that creates something different, like a sensation of of stretching time that leads to a feeling of strangeness coming from a moving medium such as cinema. Fantastic. And the interview carries on, Alberto. Um, it's, you know, this slow, light, joyful ride through Colombia can, can be sensed also in, in the tempo she she replies. The, um, the third question we, we asked Paula uh, had to be related with our personal experience with that landscape, which kind of maximizes even more what this film means to us, because one of the last experiences of freedom we had was a journey that we did together, Rafa, uh, to a landscape very close to Huila, to that region of Colombia, in which we were taken in an amazing bus with, an, uh, with amazing people to the Cauca Valley. So this film really touches even more deeply. Um, in that time, we were asking Paula about the importance of landscape, as we were talking with Diego, uh, because it feels almost like landscape of bodies dense and, and modulate and, and shape, um, uh, like dense with the landscape. It feels really like a choreography and that landscape leads the bodies to, to go where they go, which she answers as it follows. Yes. Um, we shoot the Liconia in, in the Huila, and I have a special attachment with this region because my mother was born there. And I passed there a lot of vacations when I was a child, so I have a really strong feeling um, towards this territory. And uh, I've been living here in Paris for almost 10 years now. And when I had the idea of making Eliconia, I wanted to go back to this land. Mm, it was like, like the call of the country. And the region that is portrayed in the film is a landscape of my memories and it has some nostalgic elements due to my actual life here in France. And um, I wanted to film the territory not as a postcard but as a central character that interacts with, with the group. And um, it is not a simple in interaction but um, I wanted that the landscape guides the bodies and the actions like like a demiurge, uh, always omnipresent and light and heavy at the same time. Yes, guys, happy Valentine's. Uh, I hope you... Viva el amor. Viva el amor. El amor de... <laughs> we, we miss you, we love you, and we hope to see you soon. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Cheers, bye-bye.